Hi there and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here then welcome. My name is Alison and I am a senior children's worker for a small charity in the UK called Urban Family. And if you're returning, well, thank you so much for coming back and sticking with me. Hopefully today I'm going to be able to share with you three things. First of all, I want to share with you my top tip for this week as a children's worker. The second thing is uh, an item that I've got from around the house that you can use as an object lesson. And the third thing is an activity sheet for your kiddos to use. So please stick with me. Go grab yourself a drink and I will try not to waffle, but I can't guarantee it. So it's good to be back here today. I've got a bit of a itchy nose, sorry. I'm not gonna edit the video. I'm just gonna record it. So hopefully it will all go according to plan. It is really dull. And if you are from Scotland, then you might know the word dreek, but that's how I would describe it. And if you're not from Scotland, then I'm terribly sorry. I don't know how else to describe the weather, but it's miserable. So I hope that you are having a good day. Grab yourself something to drink and sit down and we will get started. So my first thing is my top tip for Sunday school teachers. You might be looking outward online at all the resources that there are going. So everybody's making videos for their Sunday school. And I know I'm a bit late to the game here because this is the new year and we have been in lockdown for the last nine months, but it can be quite daunting. And I know that there are a lot of people that have done nothing so far for their children. And that's okay because it's so difficult to know what to do. People are trying to adjust to living at home and not going out. People are trying to adjust to working from home and not going into work. There's so much going on that I just say, don't worry about it. However, whatever we can do has got to be done. And, uh, as I was saying that there's lots and lots of resources out there. So maybe your res you, what you can do is to share other people's work through your Facebook page or through your church Facebook page. You can direct them to other videos that are out there. There are some great big ministries that have got the finance to pay for lighting and cameras. You know, there's lots that of people out there that have got big teams that can act and sing and dance and play musical instruments. And it can be really daunting and hard if you don't have those things and you think, well, but what can I offer? So I just, my point is that when I, when we were in person, I was a go big or go home kind of person. And you've got a big space to fill. You've got a large room. You've got young bodies in front of you. And so I exaggerated everything. I exaggerated the size of my props. I would exaggerate my movements and my voice. And there's lots you can do. But that doesn't always work on camera, especially if you're in like a setup like me. So I'm sitting at the end of my bed with a green screen behind me that I very rarely use these days. I've got a makeshift light, filter light in front of me and I'm filming on my phone. That's fine, absolutely fine, because I can still get across to the children what I want. But I don't want to go big and go home anymore. I want to go small. And so I've come to the conclusion that sometimes our big props and our big creative ideas don't work on the small screen and it doesn't translate in the same way. So my top tip is keep it simple. Whatever you do, just keep it simple. Maybe you could just read a story to the children and you could do it in a Zoom session where you're reading a story aloud, some like a bedtime story. That was what I decided to do back in March, was just read a story. And it ended up being something that was huge. It was 45 minute, 50 minute session. We played games, we sang songs, we uh, had a story. We, But, you know, normally we would have shown a video of the Bible story, but we actually went back to reading it. So we read the story to the kids and they loved it. They kept coming day after day. And we did um, a session called Live at Five every single day during the first lockdown. So from the 26th of March, 2020, right through to, I think the, 8th, the 19th of July, 2020, we did a session every day, Monday to Saturday. The only day off we had was Sunday. And it was incredible amount of work, but it was so worth it. And so maybe you can just do something once a week or once a fortnight. We're only doing Sunday school on Zoom once a fortnight because it is so draining and overwhelming, not only for the kids, but for us as well. So make sure that you keep it small and you keep it simple. Make it something that's sustainable. So that's my three S's, small, simple and sustainable. And if you can do that, then you'll see a huge difference in the life of the children that you're working with. And I'm so sorry for all the pointing. I don't mean to be doing that. 
My second thing is an object lesson. So you might be thinking, well, it's all very well to keep it small and keep it simple, but how do I do that when I'm not going out? So I have been uh, shielding in the UK. That means that you shouldn't go out for anything other than a little bit of exercise. I'm not meant to go grocery shopping or anything like that. And for the most part, I have stuck to that. So I haven't actually been outside for about three weeks now. Um, it's not very good. But uh, yes, so I haven't been out. So everything that I'm using is either something that I've ordered in or that I already have around the house. And just ask God to help you be creative with what you have. So last week we started a new series with our kids at Sunday School. And that series is The Life of Jesus. It is a brilliant teaching topic to do at this time of the year. So we've just taught the kids all about the birth of Jesus at Christmas time and we're headed towards Easter. So let's fill in the weeks with the life of Jesus and that's what we're going to be doing in our Sunday school. And so last week we had our last first lesson which was the boy Jesus in the temple from Luke chapter two. And we told the children the last, the story of Jesus being left behind in the temple, but that he had a wisdom about him, a wisdom at a young age that is very rarely seen. And I then explained to children that we need to have God's wisdom too. And to illustrate that, I used a tube of toothpaste. So I talked about us having wisdom teeth and how we need to keep them and protect them. I actually don't have any wisdom teeth. I never have done. So I probably... I'm not the best person to talk about wisdom. Anyway, I talked about wisdom and us not speaking when and saying things that we shouldn't. And uh, Jesus never said anything out of place or out of turn. It was always appropriate. It was always the right thing at the right time. So we need God's wisdom. And so I used the toothpaste and explained that we are like this tube of toothpaste and the toothpaste inside it is all the things that we want to say. And so I squeezed it all out. This is a new tube. I'm not going to do it again. But I squeezed out the toothpaste onto a plate and then said to the children. And so when our words come out of us, we are it's, everything from us has come out. But then we can't take that back. We can't scoop it back in. So I tried to scoop it back in with a teaspoon and I couldn't scoop the toothpaste back into the tube. So I explained to the children that we are like that. When we speak, if we say something that's wrong or out of turn, then we can't take it back. We have to suffer the consequence of saying something wrong or saying something bad. And we have to deal with it and live with it. We have to apologise and move on. But we should ask God for his wisdom because God never denies us his wisdom. If we ask him for it, he will give it to us. And that was our memory verse. And so that very nicely leads on to my third thing. Thing, which is my activity sheets. And so each week I'll share with you my new activity sheet. But this is, we have them for two age groups. I've designed these for 11, sorry, for three to fives and six to 11s. This is a six to 11s. No, this is the three to fives worksheet. Um, they look very say, similar and they come together in one pack. And so we've got colouring sheet and a, a memory verse that is very a simple memory verse for young children. We've got a simple word search for them and a maze to help Mary and Joseph find Jesus in the temple. And then for our older kids, again, same colouring page, same memory verse, but um, a more comprehensive version of it. And then we have a wor bigger word search for them. And then we have five questions for them to discuss at home with their parents. So some of our lessons are done during the main service. So we are expecting parents to sit down and talk about the subject with their children afterwards. And some parents just don't know where to begin. And that's fine. They just don't know how to instruct their child in their faith. And so we've given them some topics for them to go ahead and discuss them with them, that they can refer back to the scripture and they can discuss what it is that it actually means. And so that's what these activity sheets are. And I'll link them below in my in the description box, but you can find them in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. So that's all that I've got for you this week. I'm hoping to keep these videos to just 10 minutes long. And I will be back next week with another lesson, another top tip and another activity sheet. And so until then, I pray that you will stay safe and stay home. And if nobody has told you yet today, know that you are truly loved by God and that you are the apple of his eye. Take care. God bless you. Bye bye.